Have you seen the latest box office hit? I I'm not talking about Black Panther, by the way. Take a look. I can I'm leaving. Shit. What it will be I want you to know that I pray for you all the time. When I want. And I hope that you find whatever it is that you're looking for out there. I can only imagine, in case you're keeping track, starring Dennis Quaid taking the number three spot, grossing more than $38 million since opening weekend. So why do these faith-based movies of late fare so well? There are quite a few others, and we're going to show you some uh, bits and pieces of them. Here to make sense of it all is Father Jonathan Morris, Fox News religious correspondent, and so much more. Father, great to see Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. What's going on? Why, why are these doing so well? This is, this is the story of all time. That is that we are hungering for truth, good entertainment, which means good art in the, in the case of movies. And when those two come together, truth, right, truth, and good entertainment, then it's going to be a hit. This uh, is an uplifting but a kind of a scary premise if you think about it. A guy who abused his yeah. son and it's his transformation about it. I don't want to give it away, but it continues to trend. God's not dead and some of these others, all of which have done better and are deemed to do better than what you would think. In yeah. this well, what's the message here? It's forgiveness. Right. That is true. And we all know we need forgiveness. We need to give forgiveness and receive it. But also, there's great art. There's great entertainment. Dennis McQuaid, a great, a great actor. And we see that going back to a lot of movies. We think of The Passion of the Christ, Mel Gibson with Jim Caviezel. Why did it do well? There was a lot of truth, and they were unafraid to do it well. But then also there was great art. And you can't do just, let's do a religious film and try to make money. It doesn't, make, it doesn't work. You have to make it truthful, and you have to have great art, great actors, great directors, great scripts. All right, you mentioned The Passion of the Christ. That, of course, uh, you know, if you're looking at it in dollar terms, I mean, not, not since the Ten Commandments and some of these others. Ads that we've seen films like these enjoy the yeah. kind of support and, and enthusiasm they're getting. But it occurs at a time when we are at political augerheads. Both sides are yelling and cursing and screaming at each other. It does seem weird. It does. But again, for example, The Passion of the Christ, I, I was a, an advisor on that film. It made over $600 million. Yeah. And that would do the same exact thing today, even in our political times. When there's great art and there's a great message, great art is not easy to do. Get great actors to do great film, that's not easy. But when you think about heaven is for real, now that one made almost $100 million, and, and there's this, this other trend that movie studios typically eschew these films because they don't think, even with their success in the past, that they're going to do well. And that bias still exists. It does, and I think there is probably, uh, whether it's political or religious bias, all of that, but if you can get really amazing, amazing talent and, and hook that up with people who understand the message, right, who understand the theological message. I remember after The Passion of the Christ, somebody tried to do a film about about the birth of Jesus called The Nativity, and they said, oh, right. let's, let's try to make a movie about Christmas now. It was a disaster because the people who did it, okay, I don't know them personally, so it's not a judgment on their souls, but right. based on what I saw, they didn't get the message. And they even brought in a few good artists. You have to have great artists. You have to have great actors, and you have to have a theologically sound message, and then it works. Why is the Bible still around and very active 2,000 years later? because the message is true, and it's also been communicated in a way that we can understand it. Are you surprised in this day and age that the president has such a great amount of support from the religious right, his own dalliances and issues notwithstanding? Um, why do you think that is? Well, I, I think because he's tapped into the fact that we recognize that politicians are not perfect. We don't ask them to be perfect. At the same time, we, we want somebody to defend what we believe in. I, I would never hitch my own beliefs or the Bible or my faith to any politician any or politician, party. Right? Anybody, nobody. But when other politicians in the past have been so abusive, I would say, to Christians and, and, and so I would say, like, like disparaging, like, oh, you guys who are, are you just, to judge? Yeah, who, who are, are you oh, to judge? Oh, you right? carry okay. guns, you, you carry Bibles. You don't let that get in the no. All right, Father, it's always good seeing you. Thank you. Thank you.